Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Now new customers, when you sign up using promo code DNVR, all you need to do is place a $5 bet. And when it wins, boom, $200 in bonus bets instantly. Bonus bets! With code DNVR only on DraftKings <laughs> Sportsbook. I am the one and only Patrick Lyons. I am the also one and only, if I even exist, Susie Hunter. Patrick, how are you doing? I'm great. World Baseball Classic is cruising along, and it's really getting me revved up for the first game for Team USA on Saturday. I'm so stoked. Um, I think I'm most excited for Team Italy. <laughs> I want to see Matt it. Harvey out there. That's great. <laughs> That's one of the coolest parts, I think, of the World Baseball Classic is, obviously, it's a big stage, but you see some names, you go... I remember that guy because there's not really that opportunity. We're not watching mm-hmm. AAA yeah. to watch Matt Harvey, you know, pitch for uh, the Bowie Bay Sox or something. That's well, double he a. might not be able to anyway because I think he is. Is he still suspended? Uh, well, th- there's all of that too, right? Yeah. So there's there's a lot of guys that they're still playing pro ball and they mm-hmm. might be in the minor leagues or they might get a cup of coffee, you know, here and there with somebody late in the season, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But this is more of a spotlight stage to go. Oh, remember that guy? And it'll kind of, yeah. you know, I think it'll probably give you the feels a little bit in a really positive way. It so definitely, it's been exciting. Yeah, it gives me the feels. I was like, oh, Matt Harvey. Didn't necessarily think of him as Italian, but I know he's from Connecticut, so <laughs> I don't think of him as not Italian either. So Yeah, what is Harvey an abbreviation for in Italian? What is You know, maybe it's on his mom's side. <laughs> Could be. Pretty yeah. much everyone who is from Connecticut, like, is Italian. Yeah. I think <laughs> thankfully because with with soccer, guys will play with all kinds of names and just it, it doesn't matter. You play for whoever you play for, and no one really cares to go. Wait a minute, we need to see a birth certificate. Like it, it doesn't go like that. You represent the country that uh, you you choose to represent because of the family connections or where you mm-hmm. were born, whatever. And it's fun. So uh, sure, Matt Harvey, Italy. Let's go for it. I'm down with that. I love uh, it. Love to see it. Uh, we got more kind of bad news about the Rockies yeah. that we'll get to. We'll get that over with. Uh, we'll talk more World Baseball Classic. And we got a really fun guest today uh, for our second segment, uh, Christopher Crawford from yeah. uh, from RotoWire, because now's the time to get ready for fantasy baseball. And exactly. there's really only one spot that has, look, it, they're not in spreadsheet form. It's actually better. Like the website it's is great. It's for people whose brains aren't oh, like yours, but would like amazing. the knowledge that you have. Ex- that is my best description of what it is. I actually, I'm yeah. a big fan of the RotoWire podcast too. So I'm stoked that we're going to have That's these right. guys on. Um, kind of regularly. If my spreadsheet and my brain were a website, it'd be RotoWire. So that's a compliment. <laughs> that is a huge compliment. Uh, compliments to Noah Davis, uh, who looked really solid yesterday. Three scoreless innings. You know, uh, struck out four, mm-hmm. walked two, gave up one hit. It's a lineup without Otani and Trout. Uh, but even still, no Davis, three starts, you know, has looked really solid overall. So uh, he's a guy that I think that we're going to see again late in the season like we did last year. This time, instead of coming out of the bullpen barely for one inning, I think we'll end up seeing him, you know, starting a few games because he's got some good stuff. He's got some good stuff. What a weird debut that was for him. Uh, Such a strange debut. He's just around for that whole last um, series in L.A. It's like, OK, and he came up from double A, too. Like, are we going to yeah. get to see this kid and we did, very briefly. Gavin Hollowell got called up after him, mm-hmm. yet Hollowell got into games. Mm-hmm. Noah Davis did not. Um, he, uh, I think I may have written about this. If, if not, one of the funny things that uh, Davis said when uh, I caught up with him a couple weeks ago was like, you know, I'd been thinking about what my first pitch in the big leagues was going to be like. You know, since I was a kid, I knew I was going to throw a slider. Thought about that first pitch. I got in there at Dodger Stadium, like his local ballpark, basically, mm-hmm. that he grew up going to games at. Uh, Through that first pitch slider, nice. Through his second pitch, Cody Bellinger hit it out for a home run. He's like, you know, I probably should have been thinking about my first two pitches mm. in the big league. So he he laughed about it and yeah. a really good sense of humor. Uh, nice young man. You live He's and good. you learn. You do. You, yeah, that's what that's why we play the game. That's it. That's that's why we play. Uh, <laughs> three Rockies relievers had scoreless outings. Blair Calvo, forty man roster guy. Denelson Lamette, aka Nelly. Yes. It's going to be confusing because we've got an Ellie and an Elias Diaz, mm-hmm. and we got a Nelly. And also, Danielle Allentuck sometimes goes by Nelly. Oh, I think in her family. I don't think we've we've necessarily. I'm pretty Maybe sure. Bud Black I've has heard said Buddy it. call her that. That's true. Um, uh, so yeah, it'll get confusing. Danielle from the Gazelle, <laughs> and shoot, yeah, Elias Diaz from the. Mm-hmm. No, there's nothing that rhymes with that. But Matt Coke also had a scoreless inning, so that was nice. 
Um, but I know producer here is going to hook us up here because Bud Black uh, talking about, since we're speaking about, you know, relievers, the loss of Lucas Gilbert was bad. They signed Brad Hand. The real question is, will Brad Hand be ready for opening day? Because that's a huge element to the signing is to say, hey, we were counting on Gilbert to be in the bullpen. He's not going to be there. Who's going to take his spot? Will it be Brad Hand? Here's what Bud Black had to say about this. He threw yesterday and threw fine. You know, he indicated to me that leading up to his signing with us was throwing regularly and throwing with intensity. And here's a veteran pitcher who, you know, knows himself better than anybody and he feels is always ready. He threw a couple bullpens with us. He threw the live BP yesterday against Moustakas and Morales. Felt fine coming out of that. You know, we had some gun readings on him. They were fine. They were his, his norm. He wants to get in there and get started, right? He's, you know, just a bit behind. But as a relief pitcher, you, know, you don't need the innings that a starter has. He just needs the appearances, and he'll be able to get those in the next, you know, few weeks leading up to opening day. It was cool seeing Hand out there pitching to Mike Moustakis. <laughs> They're like the only two out there. Like, you know, all our teammates are out representing their country mm -hmm. somewhere in the WBC or getting ready for a game at Salt River Fields. And it's just us kind of pitching against <laughs> each other. So... Uh, that's cool that they kind of have each other to lean on, but mm -hmm. uh, that's positive news to to know that hand, you know, will probably be ready for opening day in San Diego, place that uh, he knows pretty well. Yeah, and um, like Buddy mentioned too, Buddy was like, I was under the impression that he was working at home, and like it seems like he was doing what he needed to be doing because he's a veteran. He that's knows it. his body probably better than anyone else. I think so. It's like a kid coming back to school, and hey, did you do? Did you read your summer? Did you do your summer reading? Did you read those books? Brad Hand, he's read those books. A former got, teacher, ladies and that's gentlemen. It. That's a good analogy, right? <laughs> that's a perfect you analogy. You assume he's doing his summer reading or his off-season training. Mm -hmm. Same difference. Same uh, thing. And he has. <laughs> Brad Hand has a really good ERA at Coors Field, incidentally. Um, what is his Coors Field is, ERA? Which is really nice. I know it's under four. Mm. Uh, I think in his basically his last three outings, uh, mm -hmm. last four outings, uh, combined maybe eight innings, only gave up one earned run. So he, he's he's been really good. So he's got uh, stuff love that to see works. That. Yeah, Coors Field. Ryan McMahon's got the stuff uh, of of hitting home runs these days. He's back at second base. I think I think this year is going to be a great year for taking some pressure off McMahon's shoulders. Uh, hit his second home run of the spring. Ellie Harris Montero hit one into the woods. Uh, which is hard to do because <laughs> there's two buttes there at Tempo Diablo Stadium mm -hmm. uh, in Tempe, and yet he somehow was able to find the the wooded area. It it's was impressive. it was really impressive. That was an absolute bomb, and you <laughs> love to see that from Montero. And Buddy even uh, spoke about Monty this morning, and he has just he's like this is like the hardest he's worked is like yeah. this this moment in time. Yeah, I, I've I've sort of likened the signing to Mustakis as a way to continue to push Nolan Jones and El Harris Montero to say, hey, you haven't necessarily won this job just yet, so keep grinding away, uh, and we'll kind of wait and see what happens. And, and maybe it will be that, you know, Mustaka starts on opening day. Mm -hmm. we'll, well, again, we'll have to kind of wait and see if he is ready. Um, and then eventually over time, Montero gets the bulk of the starts, which I really think is how it's going to end up. Uh, Sean Bouchard, unfortunately, did leave yesterday's game with a left biceps injury. Um you know, aggravated a little bit during a first inning swing. So he came out early. I know uh, Bouchard is getting MRIs on it today. And just anytime you need an MRI, it's probably, yeah. it just is not good to begin with. And so that one really hurts because I, I think with, um, you know, Chris Bryant moving over to right field and now very clearly Charlie Blackman will not be in right field. Mm -hmm. So if Bryant is moving over to right, Grichik's on the IL, who's your starting left fielder on opening day in San Diego in Sean Bouchard's hometown. It should have been Sean Bouchard. Should have been Sean Bouchard. Should so have been. fingers crossed that everything's okay on that MRI. Yeah, definitely. And also, like I spoke with him last week, he's in such a good mindset and he yeah. is so ready to build on everything that he did at the end of last season. So I feel like this was going to be a big year for him. So I really hope it's not very serious. The arm, the bicep situation. Yeah, you got to hope. Now, with another injury to an outfielder, and another week of really solid games for Mr. Zach Veen. Mm -hmm. The uh, Zach Skellington, do we like? <laughs> the what? I don't know if I, I was work, workshopping some nicknames and I'm like, oh yeah, like Halloween. Halloween is a holiday when he gets called up, right? Halloween. Uh -huh. 
And, you know, the prince of Halloween from A Nightmare Before Christmas was Jack Skellington. How about Zach Skellington? No, it doesn't work. If you don't well, get the reference, it definitely doesn't work. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I know who that is. But, um, but I don't want Zach Bean to not get called up until Halloween. Well, well also, it, that wouldn't be possible because Halloween is October. I'm are thinking you September. saying the Rockies aren't going to the World <laughs> Series, Susie? You are tipping your hand way too early. We haven't even done our season preview. Oh, my gosh. No, I forgot when Halloween was. You don't That's think all. Zach, you, don't, you don't think Zach Veen is worth getting called up during a Rocktober run in October this season? <laughs> wow, Susie. No, if there's a Rocktober run, it's because Zach Veen made the opening day roster. Well, you know, he's playing well, too. Uh, Bang 261 right now, 6 for 23. He's got a homer. He has four RBI. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think right now only Brenton Doyle and Elias Diaz have more RBI than him right now. This spring, he's got those seven stolen bases, which lead so all many. of Major League Baseball. I think right now on the V-nometer, he's at 33%, which he doesn't look too happy about that because he probably feels he should be a little bit higher. I mean, I don't know about you, but you think I, we need to move it up or I what? I say we up it. All right, let's bump this bad boy to 36%. Oh, oh, he's that's happy a now. Zach Bean smile. There it is. Seven bags. I mean, the Athletic even had a whole article about this guy kind of tearing up things in spring training. Zach Veen is is someone to watch right now I, across all of baseball. You know what? So uh, Saturday was the day that I was leaving spring training, and I was like, "No, I need to stay for this game." And I'm so glad I did because he, he stole he stole one base, and then the next inning he stole second. And then immediately stole third. It was absolutely electric just seeing this dude going for it. It was so much fun. Because we also do not see a lot of stolen bases with the Rockies. So we do not. No. It was great. You sensed it. Your spidey senses were right there. If you were there in the ballpark, you would have like just gotten goosebumps. Oh. You, you love a place like that that gives you goosebumps for being there that you can only get when you are in person, which it's, is why you need to head down to the corner of Colfax and York. You got that one <laughs> even before I really got into it. Very good. Again, Spidey Senses are locked in today. I am psychic today. I don't know Let's what you go. did this morning, but your, your balance of athletic greens and coffee and whatever it is else you got going on. Athletic greens, clicking. coffee, Pilates. Ooh, that's the combination. That's the winning combination. We got the winning combination here besides, because we got all the, the Colorado sports on. We're going to be doing March Madness stuff. You name it. If you're a diehard, make sure you get signed up at the dnvr.com. When you're a diehard, you know that you get 15% off your food, your drink, you name it. 20% mm -hmm. uh, off all of our gear at dnvrlocker.com. Or if you're down and we've got some shirts and a table set up, boom, 20% off that as well. And 20% off all of our watch parties, party bus stuff. Uh, we got one coming up April 29th, Saturday we against the Diamondbacks. It's gonna be It's going to be really cool. We got to figure it out. I'm guessing we're probably going to come back here Post game, yeah. do some stuff in studio mm -hmm. with folks that are going to be on the bus, depending on how rowdy they are. I mean, I kind of want to be <laughs> one of the rowdy people on the bus. We can talk about this offline, but I kind of want to ride the bus. Yeah? Yeah. Get some Brex. Host a show afterwards. Well, that's a, it's a great place to discuss that besides on Twitter, but in the diehards only discord <laughs> where you can have those conversations. Should Susie be on the bus? You could talk about that in the Rockies channel or the pro wrestling channel. Either one, Susie's <laughs> going to frequent, read those messages uh, and figure out what's going on Do with that. Do not implicate me in wrestling. This is an attack on my character. Look, your character uh, <laughs> is, you know, it's questionable at times. Because you, <laughs> only because you lost your glasses. And this is my segue into a Shady Rays read. Uh, look, it's buy one, get one. So there you go. That's, I mm -hmm. think you just need to use code DNVR. Buy one, get one. Yeah. And then when you lose one, you'll still have one. And then at that point too, once you've purchased it, purchased it uh, they're going to make sure they've got your back because they've got a lost and broken replacements deal going on. Perfect so they're going to make me. sure. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so they'll send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they'll have your back long after you purchase them. Are you just more of a, I lost my glasses or I sat on my glasses and broke them? I... Have I've been wearing glasses my whole life. So between those glasses and my sunglasses, I have broken two pairs of glasses my entire life. But I will lose sunglasses like it is my job to lose sunglasses. Yeah. I don't break them, but I'll put them down somewhere to keep them safe. And then I never see them again. I, that's probably why there's like millions of people who've given them five stars. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure you've probably left like a couple hundred at this point. 
right? Probably, yeah. It, it makes sense. No, Shady Rays uh, is hooking you up with their best deal of the year. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code DNVR or visit them in-store at the Park Meadows Mall. For 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses, try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people or by over 198,000 people and by Susie 2,000 times. Yes. That's how that math works. <laughs> You're juicing the numbers maybe just a little bit, but hey, bottom line is 200,000 plus five I'm stars. I'm still wondering who in this office took my sunglasses. I mean, they're Because I they're left somewhere. them in this studio. Yeah. So someone must have picked them up because we've never found them. Unless they're like really in the... I haven't looked in the couch. I think it's I think it's worth some some time on the show. No, there's a lot of junk for you in to this pull the We need to clean these couches. Yeah, more what else what are I'm... we going to find? A bobblehead from Foco? <laughs> what is it going to be? But look, if, look, if you happen to get hurt looking for your sunglasses, you can make sure to contact Bacchus and Shanker. Bacchus and Shanker, because they win for Colorado families. Uh, they help those who've been seriously injured in Colorado for more than 25 years, and they work for free until they win money in your case. So we're talking about no upfront fees to speak uh, with them, no fees while they work on your case, nothing, no fees or anything until they win money for you. They've done it to the tune of $1 billion for Colorado families and their clients. Uh, and they've got some uh, great offices in neighborhoods like Denver, Aurora, Inglewood, Fort Collins. They've got more than 30 lawyers on staff, uh, 100 folks uh, working with them to get uh, make sure that your case is, is handled properly. Uh, they've got the strength and power to win your case is the bottom line. <clears throat> they can uh, help you out with all kinds of injury cases that weren't your fault. Car accidents, motorcycle, rideshare, pedestrians, trucks, they can even help when you've been injured at work. So call them at 222-2222. All Dazas, all really, day. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Danielle said she's going all Dazas. I think, I think that's appropriate. The time. He, is, he is the moment right now. And also, he's like, I don't know, he's hilarious. I think it's like just underrated how funny he is. He is. And again, if, are you going to be, is there going to be more of a smile on your face when you think of Jonathan Daza? Troy Chilowitzki, I think you're almost smiling more with Daza. I'm definitely smiling more for Daza. Because the two of you go, oh, he was so good, but, and then how it ended up. So yeah, all Daza's today, two, 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 two. Uh, to find out if you have a case for free, Bacchus and Shanker wins. Bacchus and Shanker. All wins. Twos. But um, enough of number twos. <laughs> Let's go to a number one. Let's go to the man who is best in his class over at Rotowire. Uh, he's at Crawford underscore M-I-L-B, Mr. Christopher Crawford himself. How's it going today, Chris? I'm doing well. I got to be honest, when I was hearing those Zach Veen uh, nicknames, I was wondering if I had made a huge mistake here, but uh, I'm very <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> We're trying <laughs> to figure it out. We'll, we'll we'll talk about Zach Veen, I imagine. If, if you're talking sure. fantasy leagues, you have to. But yeah, we're workshopping Zach Skellington. You get the reference, obviously, but yeah. it still maybe misses the mark. Yes. We're working on it. It does. I'm a big fan of Veeny. Yeah. Or the Veener. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did say next to the Helton Burger stand can be a Wiener Schnitzel stand. That could work. That would be so fun. That oh, would yeah. be. But this is not what we brought you on to talk about. We want to talk about okay. fantasy baseball because that is what you do best. Oh, thank you. I try anyway. Yeah, and and I think I think starting people off with some of the basics of fantasy sports, like the different types of leagues that there are, because uh, there are folks, I, I know for me, after kind of taking a break for a little while with fantasy sports, um, I jumped back in and decided I want, I want to do a dynasty league. Like, I didn't want to just do a, a single-year league, which are great. And so, again, it's for all levels. But you can go from just one year um, to American League only, National League only, um, all the way up to something dynasty where you're playing over multiple years. And that changes the strategy just a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the best things I think about fantasy sports is there are just so many different levels that you can play and with so many different types of formats you know there's a little bit of something for everybody you know you like you said there's also different ways to even draft your team there are ways that you can have just a redraft where you're just drafting an order or you could do a salary cap league where you are spending a certain amount of money to add players to your roster which is an awful lot of fun you can play nl only you can play al only you can play keeper leagues where you're keeping uh a certain amount of players or everybody you can have a dynasty league where that means all you're doing is you're keeping pretty much everybody and then you're only drafting the new class of players and the international free agents who get signed and you can get real deep you can have a lot of fun and 
that's the best part I think about fantasy sports is it is it brings everybody together. But I will say that is kind of what I prefer about keeper and redraft leagues because or keeper and dynasty leagues. If your team unfortunately has a bunch of injuries and stuff and everything falls apart, there's not a lot of uh, incentive for you to pay too close of attention to what happens in July and August. Whereas even if you have a bad year and goodness knows that we all have bad years, I wish I would have some good years with my bad years to be completely honest with you. <laughs> but there is, it is that you can make trades. You can be building for the future. We've all seen rebuilds in major league baseball teams and we certainly can have them in fantasy, but it's a blast. And it's a lot of fun to uh, talk fantasy sports with folks. This is a Colorado Rockies podcast, so we we are not familiar with the word rebuild. Maybe so, you could. We don't define use that, that word here. Yes, <laughs> we're we're trying to work on reset. We're trying to get that word to uh, mm-hmm. to stick. It's it's a reset. But I think that's such a huge point. So again, if if you're just kind of getting in on the on the ground floor, and um, and again, maybe you you can't think of who's setting up games for the Miami Marlins. You're like, hey, just just playing a. Uh, um, you know, an, an MLB league for one season is great. Um, and then if you want something more involved, like you said, where you can go in and go ahead and have something longer than that. So you know what? You drafted poorly, let's say, but now you've got next season to start to think about. Yes. And you can go ahead and maybe trade a player who's dominating right now for someone who's about to dominate uh, next year. And and uh, I, I do like where, you know, you've got the auction leagues where you can get aggressive and you say like, all right, Chris Bryant, are you going to spend 30 on him, 35? Uh, a guy like Trey Turner is going to steal a lot of bases. Are you going 40 or going 45, depending on the league, where that can get involved? I love just a straight-up draft, too, because you guys, uh, for, for anyone that doesn't know what ADP is, just average draft position, that's a real fun way, too, to kind of break things down in a round-by-round basis and say, all right, here are 10 to 15 guys uh, that are going to get drafted by the next time that I'm up. And so they're going to be gone. So you know what? Of these next 15, 20 players, who is the best one that I need to have in that group? It's another one of those great tools that you guys offer at Rotowire uh, for making a draft more fun and making the, the player more successful. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't recommend checking that. I mean, ob- obviously, I'm a little biased if you see my hat. That, <laughs> that I understand that uh, I'm a little biased towards us. But we do such a great job of customizing, too, like that you can – look at our rankings and look if you're doing an NL only league so that you can, you know, sort out the the American league players who aren't going to be relevant for you. If you're doing a, a keeper league, we can, you can sort and look at like by age, because obviously that's a big thing. If you're doing a a dynasty league is you want the younger players because they're hopefully going to be on your roster for a little while longer. But that's the best part I think about Rotowire is the fact that we have, so many different ways that we can give you the information that's necessary for your league, whether you're somebody who just does this for the shoots and giggles to be hanging out with your friends, or if you're somebody who's trying to make some money, uh, there's all sorts of different ways to check that out. Yeah, that's a great point. All right. I got a question. Be real with me. How many leagues are you in this season? Okay. I am only in three this year. <laughs> only and that three. Is, I'm only in three this year. That is down from about... I want to say I was up to nine last year. I did have to make some uh, it's not you, it's me type of decisions last year, uh, (laughs) kind of breaking up with a few leagues, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm in three just because and two of them are actually charity leagues. So that I really wanted to focus on those leagues because I think those are the leagues we're making some money for some good folks, uh, especially for ALS, for Sarah Lang's my the best person in the entire world. We so love Sarah Langs. She's, she's the absolute <laughs> best. She is the best human being in the world. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to focus on those. I would recommend not doing more than two for most folks because <laughs> it's really hard to like pay attention to one. And that's the one thing about baseball is whether you're doing weekly lineups or daily lineups, especially if you're doing daily lineups, you got to pay attention every single day. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of baseball being played. Bas- football does have the advantage of this is only happening once a week. Now it's changed a little bit because we play four days a week now for NFL, but it is for baseball at least five days a week, sometimes six and sometimes seven. That is the one thing. So strongly mm-hmm. recommend, especially for starting out, one or two should probably be uh, <laughs> on your radar at most. Do not become a eight to ten person league like Chris Crawford once was. <laughs> I was gonna say one for the past couple of years has been more than enough for me. When nice. is the last time you drafted a Colorado Rocky? Uh, yesterday, I drafted. Uh, I drafted Chris Bryant, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, our live studio audience is eating this up. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Yeah, I and you know, I'm a big Chris Bryant fan this year. I understand that injuries is going to be a big concern. And the fact that if we're being completely honest, honest, he isn't going to have the same sort of line of protection as some of the order middle of the order hitters are going to have. But I think people forget just how good this guy was when he was healthy last year, hit 305. The power kind of came on late, but I, I'm a big believer in that power. And I think you guys probably know the ball tends to carry in Colorado. Uh, they may have done a few <laughs> stories about it. If, if people aren't talking about this, I don't know why. Um, so I do believe in Chris Bryant being closer to a 25 to 30 homer guy who can drive in around 90 to 95 runs, maybe more if he gets some help. And I think he's going to be able to stay on the field because I think Colorado really wants this guy to be not only a big part of the team this year, but with that contract, they want him when Colorado is ready to compete against the Dodgers and the Padres, and they're building a system that suggests that they can do that. Very important to keep him healthy. I imagine there'll be some designated hitter days for him as well. But yeah, I am a big believer in Chris Bryant for 2023. And with the injury um, to Brendan Rodgers and McMahon going over to second base, there's hope. Sure. All right, hey, Chris Bryant, again, depending on the league that you're in, if he has a couple games over at third base, boom, that now opens him up to slide him uh, to have some third base eligibility, which – further increases his value. Um, so I imagine, you know, he's still an early round guy, so not a true definition of a sleeper, but you're right. People have kind of forgotten about him. Uh, who are some of the the players that you see could be a really good value for where they're typ typically getting drafted at uh, amongst these Colorado Rockies? Sure. Uh, the one who immediately comes to mind, and this is true for both redraft, dynasty keeper, whatever leg you're playing in, I love Ezekiel Tovar. And Ooh. the thing about Tovar yes. is... Like, his real-life value is better than his fantasy because his defense is so good. And for those who aren't aware, you're not getting rewarded for the spectacular plays that he makes in the field and his incredible throwing arm. But he's a good offensive player, too. His bat-to-ball skills are excellent. He has excellent hand-eye coordination. Just watching him field, you know that. But even at the plate, he has excellent. The power is the biggest concern. But again, course Field, I think that a guy who maybe is a 12 homer guy could be a 15 to 18 homer guy. I do think the Rockies are going to run more, especially with the new rules. I'm sure you guys have talked about that as well, that there are going to be more stolen bases, hopefully happening in baseball. And with the bigger bases, a more chance of success. Tovar is a late round player. I think he has a chance to be a top 15 shortstop this year. Wow. And long term, I like him even more because like his skill set, he's a lock to stick at shortstop. So you don't have to worry about him changing positions anytime soon, unless for some reason they they needed they it was a luxury and they have some elite. The, the ghost of Ozzie Smith is coming to play shortstop or something like that. That's the only way you're moving so far off of that position. And I think he's always going to hit for average. I think his approach at the plate is going to be just fine. And I do believe he'll develop some power as he gets stronger, too. So, yeah. Big fan of Ezekiel Tovar in real life and a very big fan of him in the fantasy as well. You know what? Any fan of Ezekiel Tovar is a friend of this show. That's it. <laughs> very true. That is very true. <laughs> Ryan McMahon is another one of those players that has that multi-positional eligibility with second base and, and third base there. So that obviously gives him some value. Uh, let's briefly touch on Colorado pitching. Uh, I know those are two words you don't typically uh, discuss <laughs> much when you're talking about fantasy sports. Um, but as you were talking about before, like baseball is every day. There's so many games, but you guys keep up on that, uh, which yeah. makes it really easy for anyone you using Rotowire because you've got, you know, as soon as someone tweets something out about a player being, you know, hurt or is not going to play that day, you've got that information right there on that player's page. Um, Daniel Bard, I mean, do you see any threat from anybody else possibly getting saves here from him? Or is he one of those guys where you go, you know what, you're hunting for saves. Daniel Bard's yeah. pretty reliable. His numbers last year's ERA strikeout rate was fantastic. So you go, you know what, he's going to keep that job. So I feel pretty confident that even if his ERA does rise a little bit higher than it was last year, he's going to get those saves for you and you can rely upon him. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that Bard is only a one-category player at this stage in his career, but that category is a very important one, and he is going to get the chance. Even if the Rockies are a team that is not necessarily competing for a title, you're still talking about a team that's going to have 70 or so wins, and... 40 of those are going to be save opportunities. So Daniel Bard absolutely has a chance to be a 30 save guy. As for competition, I don't really think so. I would say, though, that one guy to keep in mind, at least from fantasy purposes in that bullpen, I'm a huge Denelson Lamet fan. And I that think was the, name. the fact that the thing, I think the fact that 
they are moving him straight to the bullpen where he could be a max effort guy, not worry about having to last five to six innings, but can give you a couple of innings and miss bats. There's never been a question about this guy's stuff. It's whether or not he can stay on the mound long enough for it to matter. Typically, I wouldn't recommend drafting relievers that aren't going to get a ton of save chances, but I think he's an exception because he's going to miss so many bats when he's out there and really help your strikeout rates, which is a big thing in leagues now. Some leagues only have strikeouts, but if you're in a league where it's more about rates, I think he's an excellent option and one of the few unfortunate uh, Colorado Rockies that I would be considering to draft as a pitcher. There you go. All right. I love it. We That's- love to hear it. Good. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I love what you guys have as as tools that are just right at the uh, the toolbar there. I think it's even great for people who are playing fantasy sports. And you know what? Even if in a worst case scenario you sign up and you are only checking in once a week, you're just going to learn more about baseball in general because again, the resources and tools that you guys have are so good. Where you'll have like, okay, here's the closer, here's the threat of them maybe losing their job, here's the next guy up. So again. You're looking and Cubs are coming to town, whoever it is. You can at least see their depth chart and get a feel for what the other team is like, which is strange to think that a lot of other baseball sites don't actually have that. It's like a fantasy website like Rotowire actually has all of those depth charts to kind of give you an idea of what you might see in a given week or in a given series. I love that. Yeah, I love it too. And again, I'm super biased, but I will say too, <laughs> like as I was doing, I do some show prep before I go on. Normally I, uh, I, I just uh, wing it. But for you guys, I decided to actually do some show prep. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, you know, you're very welcome. Um, but I was just looking on here, and not only do I have all the depth chart here for um, a potential closers, if something, goodness forbid, something to happen to Daniel Bard, uh, look at the starting pitching rotation. I also could see the the, the prospects that are in Roto-Wire's top 400. I could see the prospects that are interesting that are outside of that top 400. And I could do that for every Major League Baseball team. And so even if you're not paying close attention to your fantasy league or if you're just a baseball fan and you want to see what's going to be coming next or if, goodness forbid, again, injuries happen – you've got a good idea of who that next guy who can be playing is. It's very valuable for fantasy, but just for overall baseball fans, that Rotowire has a bunch of stuff for everybody. Final question for me. As you said before, Ezekiel Tovar, his value to the Rockies and on the field is worth a little bit more because, again, his defense is what gives him that value in reality. And in fantasy, you don't get credit for that. Are we going to be sitting here a year from now and saying that Zach Veen might be the better fantasy player because of what he's providing in stolen bases? It's very possible, especially if the power comes. Now, again, mm-hmm. prospect stuff has kind of been my forte for a while, but I've been a big fan of Zach Veen ever since <laughs> I saw him play in a perfect game event when he was a junior in high school, which feels Oof. like forever ago. <laughs> but it is – the, the, that is the big question mark. Is is the power going to be ready to translate next year? It could even be ready to translate this year. If if he really hits at the upper levels, I definitely could see him make his debut. But whenever he makes his debut, he's extremely fantasy relevant because he has a swing that's conducive to hitting for average, and he can fly. Now, he doesn't have like uh, 80 grade speed on the 2080 scouting scale, but he's a closer to – he's plus to plus plus, and he has – some of the best baseball acumen of any base runner, like talking to scouts about this guy, he just gets how to read pitchers. And that's half the battle. Yes, you have to be fast. You're not going to see um, Elias Diaz can be the smartest guy in the entire (laughs) world, but he's not going to steal a ton of bases. You do have to have that speed. But having that acumen, the ability to read pitchers is extremely important. And he literally is good enough at this that he could be the National League leader in stolen bases someday. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, 65 <laughs> speed, 80 baseball IQ. Uh, you can follow him at Crawford underscore M-I-L-B. Go ahead and plug away uh, anything else you got going on over at Rotowire. Sure, rotowire.com, especially for uh, those Rocky fans, rotowire.com slash DNVR. We've got a really special deal where you can check out a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Crawford underscore MILB. I already apologize about the puns. There's just nothing I can do about it. But yeah, definitely check both of those out. One more important than the other, but yeah, absolutely. Hey, we're both big fans, too, of the podcast, too, mm-hmm. the Rotowire. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Fantasy Rotowire podcast. Baseball Podcast every single day now. So that's awesome, too. We do we do one every single day. And I take part on the weekend shows. So those are the ones you really want to check out. Yes. It's All fantastic. right. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. I hope we oh, get to talk you to you so soon. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs>
Love that. Yeah, love uh, what uh, foco.com also has, too. Oh, here we that's go. Because that's another one, too, where when you use code DNVR, you're getting 10% <laughs> off right off the top. Boom. You're saving. And again, although Foco, when I hear that, I think of Fort Collins. So I, I think don't. Of Colorado. When I think Foco, I think bobbleheads. True. I mean, First I do, thing. I, I do, too. Look at this thing here. Oh, yeah. I mean, that. let's, let's zoom in on that. You hear, oh, wait, I, I've, I'm setting him up <laughs> for failure. That is not how our cameras I'm, work. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. I, just, I wanted to mess with him. <laughs> I wanted to just mess with him. Um, but like, I can think of two things at the same time. See, that's... You can, because you're insane. <laughs> a little bit. A little, you're not wrong. I'm not going to dispute with you. Uh, I'm both agreeing and disagreeing with you simultaneously. But... If you are thinking Foco like Fort Collins, you know, this isn't just Colorado stuff. Like, yeah, they got the Jokic back-to-back MVP bobbleheads, City Connect stuff. They got Stanley Cup Joe Sackick bobbleheads. Um, This is a national company. So, again, if you're getting gifts for people that are outside of this area, that's totally fine. You can still use code DNVR for 10% off all non-presale items over at Foco.com. Uh, they've they've got shirts, caps, a lot of caps, mm-hmm. a lot of headwear. They have a lot. Did you see the shirt that I was wearing on Tuesday? That was a Foco shirt. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, such it was so great comfortable, looking. super cute. Got so many compliments all day. Has that like vintage like look and feel where you're like it's so soft because yeah. it's been worn, but it's brand new. It's fantastic. I know. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I love that. I'm a big fan of the ultimate game day giveaway by Breck Brew because uh, they want to hook you up in a major way. Go to the dnvr.com slash Breck sweeps, like sweepstakes, must be 21 or older. We got a link in the show description. Uh, but right now they are uh, giving tickets away. They've already gave out uh, seats, row five, that included Lexus Club access, parking pass, and DNVR gear uh, to the Avs Kings, uh, which is going down tonight. Mm-hmm. But there's still one more shot. You can still get Nuggets tickets, Nugs against the Pels, Pelicans. Yes. I think they, they go by Pels. Definitely Or not. the Cans. The Cans at the Cans. Against the Nugs. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, it's not the can anymore. It's not the can. It's it's the jar. It's the jar. Ball Arena. It's the jar. Oh, no. That's it. No, but March (laughs) March 30th is the day. Yeah, Uh, you said something very unwholesome (laughs) off mic. (laughs) Uh, Thursday, March 30th, against the Pelicans. You're going to get two tickets, courtesy of Breck Brew. Again, go to the dnvr.com slash Breck Sweeps. Uh, it's courtside row two. Courtside fit. Love that. Courtside fit. Lexus Club access, parking pass, DNVR gear. Again, parking pass, folks. If that all is- you heard was parking pass, <laughs> you got the gist of what this ad I is would, about. I would enter a contest <laughs> just to get a parking pass, like not even tickets. <laughs> so they, like, this is kind of a steal. I wonder, I was going to say like in New York City, if they build like a new parking structure, if like to advertise it, they would give away a parking pass, but they don't have to because it's, if you have parking in New York City, in Manhattan, yeah. it's for, you don't need to advertise that. But you're right, just a parking pass Man, that would... How about employee of the year? We could use one here so you could park behind the building. We, <laughs> Brandon, if you're watching this, we need a parking pass for us old fogies here. Again, the dnvr.com slash Breck Sweeps. Must be 21 or older. Fill out the form. Super easy. Link is in the show description to make it even easier. And there'll be one winner selected before each game. All right, let's jump back into... World Baseball Classic stuff. Man, Rockies are being represented. You love to see Hensley Bam Bam Mullins winning a game mm-hmm. for the Netherlands. Great start, start for out. him. Team Panama, first win ever for them. And Justin Lawrence was the guy who closed out that game. Uh, that must so have cool. been the coolest thing to have been a part of. So cool. That's fan. It was worth the 30-hour flight. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long travel day. A little I was bit. following the journey of him and his wife on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, they're still traveling. Uh, Alan Trejo in an exhibition yesterday uh, against Cleveland, mm-hmm. starting shortstop Alan Trejo for Team Mexico. Yes. Did get a single in his first at bat with Team Mexico. Mm-hmm. So you like to see that. Uh, they'll actually be playing. Oh, you're you're a fan of them? Are you here? I would Yeah, yeah, is obviously <laughs> rooting for Team Mexico. Team Mexico over Team USA? Oh, all the day. Any, any sport. And, and, <laughs> pickleball? Even pickleball? Even pickleball. If you were a flag, I'm on your team. Do you have a mic yet? Do you have a mic yet? Oh. I do. I had it the whole time. I just. Okay. I had been saying a lot of inappropriate things to myself this whole show. So I've been trying to keep myself. This, this is true. This is true. Team Mexico is actually going to have a decent showing, I think. Um, they're actually they playing. They have the best uniforms and all. They've got great unis. They've got great unis. And, you know, Bud did mention that he is excited to see Alan Trejo. Because 
Team Mexico is playing the Rockies today. That's right. And Alan Trejo, starting shortstop. That's it. Let's go. Elias Diaz, starting catcher, batting cleanup for Team Columbia. Mm -hmm. That's pretty darn cool. Uh, and again, to kind of reset for anyone else that doesn't know, as we said, Justin Lawrence for Team Panama. We got Kyle Freeland and Daniel Bard representing Team USA. I think they've got an exhibition mm -hmm. uh, today before they uh, have their first game on Saturday. Hensley Mullins uh, managing Team Netherlands. Double A Hartford Yard Goats manager Chris Norfia is coaching with Team Italy. Can't forget that. Uh, we also have 28-year-old minor league pitcher uh, Michael Peterson is mm -hmm. pitching for Great Britain. So that's kind of cool. The Great Britain roster, I feel like, is so random. I think um, I was listening to MLB Network Radio on the way over, and they were talking about how um, the Czech Republic team, like most of the guys on that team, <laughs> like just have regular jobs. Like, they're not professional baseball players. Yeah. They're no. just, <laughs> they have regular jobs. Like, hey, I got to take some time off. I'm doing the World Baseball Classic. There are zero big leaguers to come out of the Czech Republic um, since 1952. But that one player from 1952 uh, actually came out of Czechoslovakia. And that country obviously split up. And he was more from the Slovakia area. So technically speaking, I mean, there's a serious drought there. Um, but you're right. Everyone holds uh, a day job. Catcher Martin Cervenka works in sales. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he got up to AAA with the Orioles. So he's he's actually kind of a dude. Uh, their captain in DH is a financial analyst. Their center fielder <laughs> teaches high school geography, and he gives extra credit when the students can name uh, that weekend's extra league score. So all of the players play in the uh, Czech baseball extra league. That's their, like, pro league that's mm -hmm. that's over there they defeated spain uh which had a couple big leaguers and the 29th best prospect in all of baseball um the reds noel v Marte. so it was even unlikely for them to get this far but uh they're still doing it their pitcher slash shortstop is a firefighter do you know who their pr person is that for team check uh, I do. That would be none other than Rob Livingston of the Colorado Rockies. Yes. So if you need a reason to root for the Czech Republic, <laughs> one of the Rockies PR people, Rob Livingston, is they doing it over there. They call them officers. <laughs> they call the PR people officers. Yeah, Rob will be working uh, hand in hand with a starting pitcher that is also working on the PR team. So he plays on the team and he's working communications <laughs> on top of that. Um, and and yeah, I think their manager is the leading neurologist in Brno, the second largest city in the Czech Republic. So like a literal brain surgeon. Oh, yeah. What is you harder, go. brain surgery or managing a baseball team? Look, as someone, Arguments for both. As someone who technically does brain surgery in the press box at Coors Field, according to a previous uh, Rockies general manager, <laughs> you know what? It's hard to say. I'm, I might be a little bit biased. So yeah, Czech Republic is, uh, is definitely fun uh, to watch. So um, I, I, I can't wait to watch more of it. You know, Otani was really exciting this morning. Yeah. Back in Japan, too, you mm -hmm. know, playing in, in real games for the first what time, time in a few was years. What time was that game out here? 4 a.m., I want to say, maybe. Yeah. It was a very unwatchable hour for me, so I... Not for you, for me. Yeah. So you, you would you rather watch a game that starts at 11? So the, all the night games, I think, are at 9 mm -hmm. p.m. 9 p.m. and 4 a.m., but if I pushed it back, would you rather watch an 11 p.m. WBC four-hour game? Or would you rather get up early and go, I guess I'd rather go get up early. pandemic style KBO <laughs> at 4 a.m.? And I did that. But also, like, during the pandemic, I was on, like, a morning news schedule. So, true. Like, it's true. Yeah. It's true. I had nothing better going on. It, it was actually really weird because last night in, uh, in, in having dinner with my parents, um, talking about the schedule with my dad, I was like, well, wait a minute, this morning Panama won. Mm -hmm. And then they're also playing tonight at nine because again, of how the schedule shifts. Yes. 4 a.m. for us and then 9 p.m. later that day. Time zones for are them, very confusing. It's like a day game after a night game. It's, it's just, just like shifted. That. So it's just like that. I did us. watch Team USA versus mm -hmm. the San Francisco Giants last night and I loved the idea of mm -hmm. Gabe Kapler versus America, but then... <laughs> The Giants won against Team USA. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't like that narrative. No, that is strange. Who who are you talking about? Who's the manager of the Giants? Gabriel. Oh, Kapler? Gabriel. Gabriel. Yes, yeah, Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, Gabriel. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, man, and you got to know and by following us on Twitter at DNVR underscore Rockies at Patrick D. Lyons is where I'm at. And you can find me at the Susie Hunter on all platforms. Very momentous. Very momentous, so momentous podcast, but 
Unfortunately, with baseball and podcasts, you know what they say about that momentum. What, what do they say? It's only as good as your next show. So Susie will see you tomorrow at 4.10 p.m. on the DNVR Sports Channel on YouTube. You didn't think I knew the time, did you? Back it up. Let's go.